did you learn uh, programming through practice and, and through experimenting? And what were your, were your biggest lessons in terms of uh, developing yourself as a coach that you didn't get from, from university? I think working with um, you know, Nick Burton, he was a high performance manager for the under 16s. Working with him closely um, definitely taught me quite a few things. And then also working with yourself from this year, it's even taught me even more in terms of the conditioning side. It's just learning, like you said, the energy systems and how to develop them versus just going for, you know, 10K run like we used to be told to do, go for a long run to get fitter versus, all right, maybe let's do 200 metres, five reps, and we'll try and do that for depending on the person every so often. What do you think is the best way to make the most of those internship sort of early yeah. experiences? I think just taking it all in is probably the biggest thing. Just trying to be a sponge, like absorb all of it, write things down, try and learn more about it. Um, but probably one of the best things I learned from the Eastern Rangers is it's about almost educating the players as well while you're doing things mm-hmm. versus just doing it with them. Like you want to, you want to let them know the benefits of why they're doing the runs, why, why they are going to get a little bit tired so that you've got a little bit more buy-in. So there's a couple of people on the socials who talk a lot about the buy-in. So I think just from personal experiences playing with a footy club, um, probably towards when I finished is we had a coach that just made a smash, just smashed us and used running as a penalty for not mm-hmm. completing, you know, the drills as the way they wanted to. So I think letting the players know this isn't about a punishment this is actually help developing yourself what type of things would you write down is that something that you're doing throughout the session as the session's live is it after is it um, the next day take us through your process on on what you note down so i actually have a bit i have a book that i go to so like you say almost like a journal so yeah it depends on the scenario obviously if you're in the middle of a session you're not going to run want to run off and write in your book um but it's just something that resonated with you more so through the session you're like that that makes a lot of sense or doing seminars taking down vital notes that you think is going to be really beneficial um even cues in the strength room just making sure actually yeah no that one that one works really well so anything at that time where you know you can probably use that later and you find it really beneficial i'll probably just just take a note of that you mentioned um the work as an exercise scientist um what what would be a typical day at Kiza? yeah so it's showing people, so you've got different ones, we've got, um, how we can show people how to use the equipment because it is very, it's a bit different to what you'd see in a normal gym, gym some of the equipment. And so about showing setups, but also just working with a large variety of a population. So you, we have 30-minute sessions where we're able to push individuals for whatever outcomes it could be. It could be for osteoporosis. It could just be for general strength or getting a little bit older so they want to maintain their function. So just um, going through that on a daily basis, which is really good because you get to work with a lot of different individuals with a lot of different backgrounds. So it just makes you have to be a little bit more cautious, I would say, in how you deliver your sessions to them. Right, okay. And then for, for those that are, that are members at the gym, what, mm-hmm. how does it differ to like a fitness first or maybe a PT studio? So... Depending on how you go, um, you can either work with an exercise scientist one on one. If not, if you were to, you can still train by yourself. But basically, the pathway to train at Kiza is you'll have an initial consultation with a physiotherapist or an exercise physiologist before moving into some training. So from that, you get shown how to use the equipment by the exercise scientist, and then if you wish to continue, you can continue having supervised training. If not, we'll have review sessions every 20 sessions or so just to make sure that everything's in check and then we, if we need to make any changes that we can. Looking back over your career now, what, what's a, a memory that you look back fondly um, and you're proud of? Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a challenge. So yeah. it's probably been a stack. So working as a personal trainer for about four years, you get yeah, the, the relationships you build. Like I still, I'm still in contact with a lot of the clients that I trained um, when I, when I left, I've left there for about, you know, almost over a year. So still being in contact with them. So it's hard to pick out one moment, but there's definitely some that stand out more. So for instance, having one of my, one of my clients, um, transform their bodies and prolonging surgery. That's probably a massive one. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just on their knee, um, having clients, just running, uh, doing runs with clients, 10K runs with clients, half marathons with clients, 
probably the things you probably remember most doing with them when they, you know, they don't think they can do it themselves. And then they rope you into doing it with them. 